Right guys, well today is hoof trimming day, so I have all the boys out, these are all the bucks, this is Porter, he is probably the most, he's got the worst feet, um, and that's a long long process trying to get his feet done, all sorted, and then I have Zach, Zach's there, he, he's also not the most compliant when it comes to feet, Nebu, Nebu's very good, he's been brought up with hoof trimming, and this is Cookie, and Tiki, who is need of a brush, aren't you babies? Now the two babies are very good, they've been hoof trimmed ever since they were young. Nebu, he's had a lot more since he got here, hey, you're about just under 12 months when you got here. Zaki, you're learning, <laughs> it's just it's something that has to be done. And Porter, well Porter, Porter you're the most freakish one aren't you, hey, but you're the sweetest goat. So, um, Porter is the wilder of the bunch, okay, he really hates his hoof trimming and he'll carry on like a pork chop. So what I have is, I have eyelet bolts that are bolt through ones with, I'll sh see if I can show you, the decent flat washer on the other side. Oh, actually no decent flat washer on these ones. These are just slightly larger, rounder things. But anyhow, um, the point is you don't want to be able to pull the bolt through. I also do double bolts so they can't undo and get loose. Okay, and when you're setting them up, Make sure you countersink it into the wood, and that way they can't spin. See how they're sort of stuck in the wood there. Next I use a decent collar, like they have their quick release collars for paddock use, um, but I use a buckle collar when it comes to stuff like this, because it has to be super strong, because um, they will fight like the clappers. Hey, Porty. And they also have a double-ended clip, which I use to pull them right into the post, and, thank you, Porter, and also a, um, double-ended um, dog ute chain, you know those farm dogs, they chain them to utes, and there's something called a single jaw swivel, so it's a single jaw because one end's like a normal shackle and you can undo it, and then the other bit's just round, but you can just use any sort of swivel um, shackle, and the reason I do that is because I spin the boys, the post is in the middle of my stand, which is just two plastic pellets cut in half, and then just some ply on top, just screwed down with some roof bolts, I've just used spare bits, but you can use whole sheets if you want. And all I do is I spin him from one side to the other, depending on which side I'm doing. Um, this is great for vets, this is great for hoof trimming, drenching, you name it. Um, I also use railing because it's solid, and I'm dealing with really strong bucks. So I need something that I can push them up against too if I have to. And also with the beauty with horns, I can actually hook the horns under the rail if I need to really restrain them. Um, so the railing holds one horn for me, which holds half the body, and then I can hold on to the other horn. So that just depends on what sort of procedures are happening at the time. Um, the other thing is, all the boys here, um, as lovely as they are, there are times where they're just not going to be compliant. So I always put halters on them, and the halter will actually get chained to the double-ended clip. And the halter, to the double-ended clip, and then the long dog chain will stay on the collar. Okay, so I've always got two points of contact. If one fails, I've always got a secondary point because you don't want the goats running off. Um, I am roadside and if this lot took off, it wouldn't be so good. And those guys here, they're all on the same as well. Um, basically, it's a eyelet bolt. Yet again, countersunk. Single jaw swivel chain, double-ended clip dog chain, this is slightly longer ones, um, basically they're longer because they can sit down and rest, um, but if I need to wash them, normally I wash the whole lot in one hit, yes there's no favourites here, hey, everybody gets washed all together, and I tie them up to the double um, clip, and basically that way they can't struggle too much, um, goats if they have too much room to move they will break collars, they'll break most things, so the less ability they have to um, move, the better. Um, they don't have as much, um, let's call it propulsion, to try and break things if they're really tight. Um, now in Zach's case, because I don't know what it is with him, but he likes to wind his horns around his clip. So his one, because he's a taller goat anyway, if he sits down, um, he's had an extra strong collar put on as well. You'll see the double, double collar, tacky, double collar there. And if he sits down, um, he can still, well I should say he can still sit down, even though he's on the double clip as well because, yeah, you'll probably break the chain, Zach. You're so strong. 
anyhow I'll get on with the hoof trimming and I'll show you the process so now Porter is in his halter okay basically I've got a variety of sizes of halters um, I use halters plus um, Sue Vanna's brand they're really really strong they're actually much stronger than the shoof ones um, the hardware the stainless hardware um, is almost double if not three times the thickness and with goats you need good hardware otherwise that's going to be a point of failure okay and basically I've got him in the halter and now the halter is clipped with a double clip onto the um, swivel jaw okay he doesn't like halters okay so he will wriggle um, I could do it with a collar but to be honest I, those are long stabby horns and he only needs to just flick them and he could rake me or possibly do some damage so with the halter he can't go anywhere um, you'll notice that his head is up high the reason for that is all their strength is in their shoulders I do have another one down below which I use for the smaller goats but whenever you're doing um, hoof trimming or anything like this that requires you against a goat basically in terms of oh I don't know what to call it um, in terms of what, maybe just restraining them let's call it um, you've got to be in a position where they can't put their head down and get all the strength in their shoulders because that area there that is where all the power is if you get the head up they're slightly off I wouldn't say they're off balance but they're not able to use their shoulders or engage their shoulders for a lot of strength based pushing um, or shunting uh, but also um, but also what what else was I going to say oh basically with the halter very similar to a horse you control the head you control the rest of the body um, halters are invaluable when if you're teaching your goats to lead um, or if you're out and about um, basically out in public always have a halter on them it's too easy for a goat to get scared if you just got a collar on and just pull um, with a halter you've got finger touch control with a collar um, you could potentially be dragged through the grass like I've been done a couple of times so yeah halters must have one now as for the kit rubber gloves you're going to be using sharp equipment and you do not want to be stabbing yourself you're dealing with feet muck poo bacteria you do not want that getting into your skin um, and potentially causing yourself problems um, foot trimming um, steps bourbon and ball ones I've got just a hoof brush with a bit of a, a pick on the end this is I use for scrubbing out the mud and then um, I can use that to dislodge any sort of caked mud this is Clevedon County Sharpener, which I use for my bourbon ball sharp sharpeners. Oh, sorry, shears. Um, they are that pair is probably about seven years old, still going strong. And even this is what 10, 10 years old now, and that's still going strong too. And then my last tool is my little manicure corn plane. That's so I can do precision um, trimming underneath the hood, foot, especially in winter time. If you're using these, you can easily sort of almost get like slivers and, and little cuts uh, where you haven't done a, a full cut, and that's where the bacteria can harbour. With this, you can actually do a, a clean slice of the hoof and get a really flat, clean, non what, what do you call it, non sliced um, sole, so that they can't actually get uh, bacteria um, harbouring in the actual sole part okay so we go on to the foot trim oh this is a kit as well I just use um, what's that, a grooming bag it's got lots of little pockets and things on it um, I've got Tetravet spray which is a topical antibiotic um, I've got the Equicare uh, mud fever spray especially this time of the year and then my go-to is always copper tox got a towel so I can wipe my hands my bottle of Dettol so I can disinfect all the tools between each hoof and then here I've just got some spare tools, um, some scissors and things. And I always have a, a brush because while they're tied up, I also groom them. And it gives me a chance to actually give, um, have a really good look over them to see if there's any abrasions, cuts, any lumps, anything that's of concern. And I can check for lice um, and all sorts of things. Hey. Now after hoof trimming, um, what we do is we also do um, mineral a liquid mineral um, drench uh, while they're here um, they do get a little bit in their meals every day but I also do a um, basically a, a foot trim top up as I call it and hoof trims here generally once a month uh, depending on I suppose the, the hoof of the animal Massport needs to have hoof trims probably about every second or third week at the moment um, 
but these guys here, they're basically every four weeks. Okay, right, that's all for now. Actually, Porter, should we show them how we swing you around? Okay, so this is me doing one side. Okay, the platform is set at the height so that I don't have to bend right to the ground um, because that puts me off balance. Um, so basically, I'm only le leaning down uh, only on a slight 45 degree angle. And then all I have to do is I put my hand behind him. Come on. Up, up, up and over, up and over. And then I can swing around to do the other side. So, it's really simple. Nothing complicated about it. Oops. Okay. Nothing complicated. Okay. And he swings himself back. As a prey animal, they always want to be heading into their direction of flight. So that's their paddock over there, so that's the direction of flight. And that's the other thing. Um, if all was to fail and maybe the bolt comes out and they get loose, worst comes to worst, he will run straight through into his paddock. And that's why I've got the gate open. Obviously, once he's in there, I'll be shutting the gate. But also, I start generally with Porter because he's the most freaked out. Then I move on to um, his best mate, which will be Zach, and then Nebu, and then the two babies. He's just, oh, he's just up to the, I don't know. Anyhow, so that's the order I do, um, and that seems to work well. It's order of hierarchy too. So yeah. Right, rat baggers, let's get on with it. I'm going to throw this trick in. Zach, is, even though he's got his um, halter on, he can still get me with his horns. He's very flexible with those little horns, and they are big. They're not little horns. So the other thing I do is I tie the horn up to the fence and that restrains him so I can get this done faster, sooner than, rather than later. Um, some may say it's cruel, it's not about cruelty, it's about safety for yourself, but also if he can't really move, goats have this funny thing where they just sort of, even if you put them into a special sort of headlock, um, which you need to sometimes to restrain them, um, they just sort of go and they just stop fighting. Like now, okay, he might not be happy. That little eye says I'm not happy, but he's not actually fighting it. So yeah, this way I can just do the front feet safely and I'll probably have to do it on the other side as well and then it's just done. And then after he gets taken off it for the back legs and he's fine. So yeah, I just don't want to be stabbed in the back with these sharp little things. Yes. So there we go. Okay, just another trick that you might need to employ depending on your goat. And Porter's been done, he's happy now. Next thing after this will be a um, quick wash with the hose to get all the wheeze off their legs. Um, all my boys are in rut. Skippy, can you get out of there? They don't want you down their body feet. And they can get something called urine scold, which is, um, I don't know if Zaki's got it. No, Zaki's hasn't got it. But uh, basically the acid from the wheeze, if it's always on the legs, will actually make the leg go bald and actually burn the skin. So at least once every couple of weeks I just rinse their legs and also their faces as well because they have this lovely habit of licking <coughs> or drinking each other's pee and they get it all over their face as well. So face and legs, they're the two things that get washed around here. Right, more later. So all I've used to tie the horn is just the handle of the dog leash. This is just a short dog leash. Literally go around the fence post. Just pull them to the fence post. Go around a second time through the middle of the horn and then I just clip them onto the ring, just the ring down there. Okay, really, really simple. It's easy to undo as well. Hey, it's easy to undo. Look at that, none the worse for wear. Got two done quite nicely. Hey Zeki. Right, other side now. 